It's playoff time in Tennessee. Welcome to the Six Rivers Media Sports Huddle. I'm your sports editor, Jed Vaughn. Joining me as always, Jeff Birchfield, Andrew Smith, Brian Woodson. We've got a lot to dive into this week because on Friday night, the field across the state of Tennessee will cut in half. And it will continue to cut in half each week until we have a state champion. We'll get to that in a minute. But first, a word from our loyal sponsor, Lazy J Farms Old Fashioned Butcher Shop. Lazy J Farms has been raising the finest cattle and all-natural pork for three generations on the family farm in Fall Branch. Their blonde Aquitaine herd offers a leaner, healthier, and more tasteful beef. And the butcher shop is local, farm-to-table, and 100% authentic. This is the way your grandfather shot for me. With steaks cut to order, quality assured, and ready to ship to your door. Open Thursday through Saturday on Bloomingdale Road in Kingsport. Come see us. Well, you've heard it before, offense sells tickets, defense wins championships, and come playoff time, that's usually true. Uh, This past Friday, we had kind of a good intro to the playoffs, kind of an opening ceremony, if you will, at William B. Green Jr. Stadium in Johnson City. Dobbins Bennett gets the win over Science Hill 18-12. Jeff and I were there. Jeff, were you surprised at all by this? Yeah, I mean, I was a little bit surprised. I mean, Science Hill's been really impressive this season. I think they were favored, you know, going into the game by most, and of course, some of the uh, Dobbins Bennett kids took that as a chip on their shoulder, you know, and also, uh, you know, they were able to come out with a big win. Of course, Science Hill was able to move the ball up and down the field, but just wasn't able to capitalize on some scoring opportunities and end up ultimately hurting them in the, you know, final result. Aiden Perry, of course, cracks the century mark on the ground. You know, that's obviously not unusual for Science Hill, but what was unusual was um, – Dobbins Bennett seems like they focused on taking away Baylor necessary. Yeah, Baylor had hurt them the year before when Science Hill beat them in overtime. So when they did try the Wildcat just a few times, Dobbins Bennett had a good game plan, you know, for that, obviously. And then DB had some uh, really good runs, particularly Tegan Bagley. You know, he didn't have a ton of yards, but he did have two crucial touchdowns, you know, and they were able, like I said, you know, come away with a little bit of a surprising win, I think, for most people. You know, two of the plays that stand out to me on defense is one in the first half, uh, Jalen Thomas gets a fourth down stop. He undercuts Baylor necessary and for a three-yard loss. And, and of course, his younger yet taller brother, Tyree, with 11 tackles, four for loss, four sacks. He had a fourth down sack and a third down sack in the fourth quarter. The third down sack, of course, stopping Science Hill's final drive. Back to defense wins championships. Dobbins Bennett able to run out the rest of the clock. Austin Sykes with a critical completion on third down and then keeps for another first down. Victory formation, game over. Only the second time since that epic 2012 clash that Dobbins Bennett has gotten the win over Science Hill. However, it's the fourth time in the past uh, seven, eight years that uh, Dobbins Bennett has won the region. 2017, 2019, 2020, and now 2024. Uh, So just an incredible win for Dobbins Bennett. they have a rematch for the first round, a fair, a fair good team that they beat 27-20 to 20 to open the season. We'll talk about that in a minute, and we'll talk about Science Hill and Cleveland in just a minute. Um, but, Jeff, another uh, kind of opening ceremony of the playoffs, Unicoi County. How about the Blue Devils getting the Region 1-3A championship, their second conference and title in four years, over Johnson County? Yeah, and another defensive, you know, showdown there. As ends up 10-7, Unicoi County with the win. Of course, Johnson County missing one, but he had their really good running back, you know, who got injured a couple of weeks ago. And then, of course, Unicoi County uh, missing one of their best receivers, you know, with uh, Garrett Sellers. So both of them missing two big play uh, guys, but Unicoi County able to come through with the win. Uh, Cody Cutlip has a big, you know, kick return there late and sets them up for a win and field goal. So the Blue Devils able to take the 10-7 win, you know, get the late stop to secure the game. Emilio Soto with the game winner for Unicoi County. The Blue Devils had not won a conference title since 1991 until four years ago. Now they've won two in the past four years. So just an incredible job by Drew Rice and that entire staff up there at Unicoi County, Jeff. Yeah, Drew's done a terrific job since taking over that program. You know, I think back to the old days, they had Lewis Thompson and some of those guys were, you know, terrific coaches. But, yeah, I mean, since Drew's taken over, he's a Unicoi County Guy through and through, he's a star for them back in the day on the football field, on the basketball court. Really passionate about that school. So, you know, I think he's the perfect man for the job there, Unicoi County. 
uh, Johnson County anything but out of it with a quarterback like Jay Stout and a linebacker like Sam Kretzinger. Uh, Johnson County is still very much alive. They do get the home playoff game uh, with the number two seed. Um, West Ridge, Andrew, unfortunately not going to the playoffs, but they finished the season strong. But the dominant color on Thursday night in Morristown was not orange or blue. It was yellow. Oh, absolutely it was. Um, it, it was hard to really get much of a flow going for either team uh, on Thursday night in Morristown. Over 40 combined penalties between the two teams. You never want to hear that. Um, but uh, what Flo was able to be found, Trey Frazier found it. Um, he had a great game in his send-off as a wolf. Um, uh, 153 yards and three touchdowns through the air. Uh, 132 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. Uh, really strong performance from Trey whenever I talked to him after the game. He was uh, obviously very emotional how much West Ridge and Sullivan County has meant to him. Um, so it was cool to see him have a moment like that uh, against Morristown East. And, uh, yeah, uh, for, uh, for the Wolves, it's a great jumping off point going into next year. You mentioned they're not making the postseason. Still wouldn't necessarily call it a bad season. They finished 5-5 five and five on the year, had their region struggles. But, you know, any chance you can to try and build some momentum uh, toward next year is obviously good. Uh, and then also talking with Coach Hilton after the game, he commended his guys, hey, these guys continue to fight, they continue to show up, and they very easily could have not done that after they got eliminated. So uh, a lot to build on still for West Ridge moving forward. Trey Frazier and, of course, uh, All-State lineman Trent Tatum, uh, just two of West Ridge's first senior class to go to the school all four years. So this will forever be um, a landmark senior class at West Ridge, no matter what happens. And, uh, Brian, you were up uh, – to, you were up in Wise the other night. Uh, Gate City gets the win, 25-7 over the Warriors. What a night for Walker Hillman. Yeah, he ran for – this also had a lot of laundry also. Both teams, they were holding penalties without it. It seemed like every other play. But uh, he did have a great game. Uh, 215 yards is what I had. And uh, three touchdowns. There was one touchdown he had called back by a holding penalty. Um, it was, he just – he's so fun to watch. He's, he's not the biggest guy, but – he gets in there in the middle, and they just can't find him. And he just keeps running and keeps turning in legs, and he's gone. Uh, he's fun to watch. And uh, the big play, they why is Central finally got within 12-7 to 7 in the third quarter? I'm still sitting there tweeting that score. And uh, the kickoff goes to Parker Jenkins. And I just thought of him, he's not going to go more than five yards. He went 74 yards for a touchdown. Really nice run. And that kind of just sealed the deal there because Wise really couldn't get anything going. But, yeah, it was a – Good night. Uh, too many penalties. Uh, the HC played well on defense. Wise has a really good, uh, some really young, talented players. But uh, the HC did a nice job. Forced three turnovers in the first half and really had it under control from there. So obviously uh, big in terms of uh, playoff position yeah. for Gate City. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wise Central, of course, breaking in their first year coach still, yeah. mm-hmm. but uh, just a big win by the Warriors yeah. on the road or, yeah. or, or, the, or the Blue Devils, yeah. I should say. Yeah. <laughs> Warriors, of course, being Wise Central. But yeah. um, speaking of going on the road, Andrew uh, Cherokee and uh, Cloudland in three A or in four A rather and one A, both of them will be on the road for the first round, but they're going in with some playoff momentum. Uh, Cherokee gets the win Friday night, and Cloudland gets the win at Unique Friday night. Yeah, uh, I'll start with Cherokee since I was in Rogersville. Um, it, it was just an explosive first quarter for uh, the Chiefs, 24.4 first quarter. Kind of put that one away early. Uh, struggled at times to run the ball um, despite the score. Um, Hayden Hook had a couple rushing touchdowns, but maybe yards per carry wasn't super high. Uh, but Landon Jeffers had typical Landon Jeffers day, over 200 yards passing, three touchdowns kind of pedestrian, weird enough to say, for a guy like him. But, uh, it, you know, Cherokee did what they had to do. Uh, Union County um, had had their struggles throughout the, the course of the season. We'll talk more about them later as they still did qualify for the postseason themselves. Uh, but good for Cherokee to get uh, some momentum. Only the sixth time they've hit the seven win mark in school history versus 2019. So a big win for them. And meanwhile, for the Highlanders, it was the Landon Barnett show. Uh, against Unica, 234 uh, yards, three touchdowns. Um, just a very successful day running the football for Cloudland, which if Cloudland's going to have success, it's going to be running the football. Uh, so big, big win for them. Uh, Unica was able to throw the ball around a little bit, though. Car McCain, three passing touchdowns. They were really able to kind of find a groove here late in the season, so uh, May not going into the postseason are the Rangers, but even for them, able to get a little bit of momentum hanging next year. Yeah. 
And obviously this being, like you said, the first winning season for Cherokee since uh, that 2019 season, so pre-COVID we're talking, you have to go back even further than that to find the last time they won seven games. That was all the way back in 2004. So also the last time they won the conference championship. Um, just an incredible season by, by the Cherokee Chiefs. So obviously not a, not a season, not something to take for granted. No, not at all, not at all. And uh, Jeff, of course, uh, you were at Happy Valley on Thursday night. Happy Valley will be at home for the playoffs. And they closed the regular season kind of fittingly, a shutout win at West Green. Yeah, they uh, won at West Green, like I said, third straight shutout to end the season, you know. So regular season, they've had a terrific year on the defensive side of the ball. Of course, they're 7-1 overall. But uh, 58 points is all of Happy Valley's given up all year. Uh, Gabe McDougal, the starting quarterback, had an eye injury, so he's there on the sideline. I talked to him a little bit. He should be back, I think, this week. But since he was out of the game, sophomore Lane Parker came in. Warriors didn't miss a beat. He scored three touchdowns, you know, and led them to the 38 nothing win down there at Jim Salsman Field on Thursday night. Yeah. So just uh, obviously a great one by Happy Valley. Um, seven and one for the regular season. Obviously they lost two games to Hurricane Helene. And like Cloudland lost two games to Hurricane Helene. Hampton, of course, all the Carter County teams, a lot of teams in the area kind of in the same boat after Hurricane Helene not playing the full 10-game uh, schedule. Uh, two teams that obviously did not play a full 10 games played nine, Elizabethton and Greenville. Greenville gets the win. The Devils win Region 1-4A kind of convincingly, 41-7. to um, Maybe the, the, the winning, Greenville winning not so much a surprise, but maybe winning 41-7 to kind of caught me off guard a little bit. It was, of course, 27-7 to at halftime. The Devils go on to add two more touchdowns in the second half. Uh, Carson Quillen doing Carson Quillen things. Three touchdowns, 146 yards. Uh, Caden Baugh, of course, what would I expect? He's the son of, uh, of record-setting passer Cody Baugh. Caden, nearly perfect, 7 of 8 for 121 yards and a touchdown. None of his passes hit the ground. The only pass that he didn't complete was intercepted. Um, Rhett Slagle, uh, 114 yards and a touchdown for Elizabethton. Uh, hits Zach Wallen to uh, get the Cyclones within 13-7, but from there it is all Green Devils, and Greenville rolls to the Region 1-4A championship. Speaking of champions, uh, South Green wins Region 1-2A. They finished, They had already clinched it, but they finished perfect in conference play, uh, first time since the Luke Myers era. Uh, they get the win over Hampton 35-20, also their first win over Hampton in, uh, since that same year, 2021. The Bulldogs, Dominic Burleson, um, rushes for um, nearly 300 yards, nearly 300 yards, and it's still not enough for Hampton. Although Hampton did everything they needed to do, they controlled the tempo. South Green did not. South Green's offense did not take the field in the first quarter. The problem is Nash Raider got a 99-yard kickoff return, and the Rebels uh, get their first score. Uh, Hampton got actually took the lead in uh, the third quarter, 20, 20 to 14. But South Green. Uh, behind Jacob Susong gets uh, three unanswered touchdowns and uh, just, just and the Rebels finish off Hampton and finish off undefeated in the conference in the conference play and they win Region 1 2A. Um, Brian a couple, a couple other games uh, Tennessee High um, they won't be home for the playoffs but again they're going in with momentum they've won six in a row they beat Daniel Boone and uh, Rye Cove whoo holy cow 54 to 14 over John Burton. Yeah um... Tennessee High, this is the same as last year. They won six in a row, then they have to go on the road and play Powell. Uh, Trent Dowdell had another huge game with 178 yards and three touchdowns. And Elijah Plumbar, he's picking it up with 115. And Turner Elliott, seven of eight for 111 yards. It's hard to, hard to do much better than that. So they rolled pretty well. Dana Bloom, of course, had a rough year, but they'll be back. But uh, but the Vikings have a tall task ahead on going to Knox Powell. And then... Uh, Racco rolled over Burton. Uh, Landon Lane, as always, had another huge game. Accounted for 192 yards and five touchdowns. Will Rollins had a big game, and he's also a key defensive player. And they just keep rolling at Racco and uh, didn't have much problem with John Burton. Are you, are you saying Racco might be the team to beat? No, I'm not totally so. Yes. You think so? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> hey, you never know. But uh, that's a look around the area for uh, week 11. Uh, David Crockett uh, goes to Sevier County to end the regular season. Uh, the Smoky Bears, of course, rank second in the state. And not surprisingly, they do clinch Region 1-5A with a 48-7 win over the Pioneers. Northview Academy clinches the fourth and final playoff spot in Region 1-4A. They get the win at Solonese 48-9. 
Uh, Granger and Volunteer, of course, Granger knocked out by that solo in the East win. Keelan Relaford and the Falcons, they just, the, kind of the theme all year, they kept fighting, but they come up short 49 to 35. Cosby, I mean, never thought we, do we ever think we'd say this? The Cosby Eagles, region champions of 1 1 A, they get the win over North Green 26 14. Both teams, of course, will be home for the playoffs. Uh, Thomas Walker, a 49 13 winner over Twin Springs. That's a look around the area for week 11. We'll be right back with the playoffs and the final week of the regular season in Southwest Virginia right after this. The Lazy J Farms Tailgate Box offers great value all season long. Get 40 pounds of meat for only $116. That's five pounds of beef patties and three pounds of chicken breast, one pound of thick cut bacon, three packs of premium beef hot dogs and two packs of Chicago dogs and four pounds of thick cut pork chops all for $116 at Lazy J Farms Butcher Shop in Kingsport. Visit us online at LazyJBeef.com. As far as Tennessee goes, it's here. Every game from here on out could be the last one for anybody. It was hard to decide on a game of the week this week. We've got two intriguing ones up here in Class 6A. Science Hill at home hosting Cleveland for the first time ever. Uh, Dobbins-Bennett, of course, a rematch of week one against Farragut. The Indians won that one, 27 to 20. But first, we're gonna start with Johnson City and Science Hill hosting Cleveland, a seven and three Cleveland team. Uh, Science Hill, of course, seven and two, and Science Hill's gotta put Dobbins-Bennett behind them. Yeah, I expect a big bounce back this week from Science Hill, you know. I think, you know, uh, they've got a veteran coach, obviously, and Stacy Carter, who's you know, been through this before. Like, so, I mean, I'm sure they'll be strong coming off the loss to Dobbins Bent. First thing Science Hill's got to do, we talked about it off camera there, is stop running back Isaiah Davis for Cleveland. You know, he's got like over 1,100 yards rushing, and they've got a good quarterback as well in Chase Stevens. Uh, some of the intriguing matchups are the Science Hill offense against the Cleveland defense. Because when I talked to Coach Carter earlier, he was really concerned with. A.J. Westfield there on the defensive line, you know, he's 6'2", 280, really a disruptor there. And then David Yancey, their middle linebacker, actually leads them in tackles. But then Science Hill's counters, you know, and they usually do have that four horsemen rushing attack, and I know they want to get back to all four of those guys really having big games with Aiden Perry, uh, Baylor Necessary, and that Wildcat, you know, and the Leak Anderson, and Ian Mathis, you know, want those guys coming on strong. But I think probably Science Hill's best chance of maybe doing some damage against Cleveland. Cleveland's got some injuries in that secondary, so you're hoping maybe for Science Hill's sake that, you know, Spencer Taylor can find, you know, Stephen Famoyan and John Gutura, you know, and some of those guys, you know, open there deep in Carter Nelson. Yeah. And uh, Corbin Lazier as well. Yeah, um, tight end, I should have mentioned him yeah. as well. But And, and he did find him against Thomas Bennett, but – uh, just not consistently. Dobbins Bennett bent but would not break. And just kind of similar to week one. Dobbins Bennett bent but did not break against Farragut. Dobbins Bennett jumped ahead 14 to nothing early in that game. Uh, Tegan Begley with a couple of touchdowns. But uh, Tegan Begley actually left that game with an injury and was sidelined for next week or two. Uh, he, he was sidelined for the next week. Came back uh, for week three against West Ridge. But um, obviously the one thing that that kept hurting Dobbins Bennett that night was Robbie Jacobs. He had five catches for 140 yards. Um, so from quarterback Corbin Hobson. So the passing game and getting speed on the outside is what got Dobbins Bennett last time. Obviously, that's been a point of emphasis for the Indians since then. And don't judge Farragut by their four and six record. Uh, the Admirals started 0 and five, but they had won four in a row until last week's loss to Maryville, a game which Farragut led 21 nothing before losing 28 to 21. So. Is Farragut going to either be still feeling the hangover from that or is Farragut going to be motivated and just ready to go and turn the page? We don't know. You have to wonder about that with you know high school kids and, and stuff like that. But uh, Austin Sykes, the Indians passing game, they, they got to fi find that balance on offense that they were able to find last week. And that defense that played last week, that showed up last week in Science Hill, that defense has to show up and not allow Robbie Jacobs, Mason Collins, or uh, Landon Collins, I should say, or whoever – uh, to get outside on them and get an open space because that's what hurt Dobbins Bennett in week one. That can't happen again if the Indians want to advance. And it would be Dobbins Bennett, of course, looking for their first playoff win since 2020, the Zane Whitson era. Uh, so the Indians at home against Farragut, 
Uh, Tennessee High, like you said, Brian, on the road at Powell, a tough task, a battle of eight and two football teams. Uh, David Crockett uh, on the road, of course, at Knox West, a two-time defending state champion, Knox West, which just defeated Powell 30 to 18 uh, to win the Region Two, Region Two 5A, of course. Um, Andrew, uh, Elizabeth, and then Greenville. Uh, obviously, Greenville gets the big win. Both teams at home this week. Um, Fulton and Elizabethan meeting for the first time ever. Yeah, um, it's going to be a very fun matchup. We got I uh, see a Fulton team coming up from Knoxville. Uh, making the trip up to Carter County. I know uh, the folks in Elizabeth will certainly be hoping to make an impact on that game at Citizens Bank Stadium. Um, in terms of on the field, I think Elizabeth has to have success running the football. They can't let a game get away from them like they did against uh, Greenville last week. You have to let your run game keep you in a ball game. And through that, you're allowing Rhett Slagle to both be a threat on the ground using his legs and through the air. Um, if you're Elizabeth and you need to be able to ha- play complimentary football uh, against a team like Fulton, um, the finish is the three seed in their region. Um, yeah, they, had, they have a couple good wins. Gatlinburg Pittman, not in their region, but a strong win uh, for Fulton there. And they also have a good win against Carter on their schedule. So it uh, should be a fun matchup uh, in Elizabeth. Now, Cherokee, like we like you said earlier, you covered them this past week. They're on the road. They are going on the road to face a 9-1 and Gibbs team. Yeah, no, Gibbs is going to be a very tall task for uh, Cherokee. Their only loss is to perennial power uh, Anderson County. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be a, a tough task uh, for the Chiefs. Uh, they need to run the ball better than they did against uh, Union County last week. That If they want to pull off the upset here, that's what has to happen. No ifs, ands, or buts. Landon Jeffers is talented. He's got talented receivers. But if they're stuck just throwing the ball, trying to play catch up against the Eagles, it's not going to likely end particularly well. Um, You need Hayden Hook in this offensive line to have a strong night, uh, kind of take a little bit of the crowd out of it um, there. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, a a big, big task for Cherokee. Uh, Obviously, he's had a strong regular season, but – Times are different in the postseason. Yeah. And that Union County team, the Cherokee face, of course, going to Unicoi County this week, Jeff. Uh, the Blue Devils, of course, fresh off the region championship. Johnson County at home against Austin East. Um, so just uh, when you look at those Class 3A playoffs, obviously a favorable matchup for Unicoi County, and on paper a favorable matchup for Johnson County. Um, but just uh, what, do, what, do you, what do you see here in these 3A first round games? Well, with uh, Johnson County hosting Austin East, the Roadrunners, always an athletic team. So, you know, they're going to face some challenges there. I think Johnson County, uh, particularly maybe Carter Rudy in that secondary, he probably needs to make some plays. He's probably going to have to have some more big catches, you know, from Jay Stout and all. And then with Unicoi County, you know, Kobe Jones went out of the game late with an uh, ankle injury, you know, so. Uh, but I think uh, Unicoi County, if they're able to run the ball, establish the line of scrimmage, get Branson Salt started early, you know, I think Unicoi County will probably be okay in that one. You know, and their defense has been playing exceptional. You know, they held Johnson County seven points. I covered them last Monday night. Also, they played two games last week, and they shut out, you know, Hancock County. So, if that defense continues to play like they are, they're going to be hard to beat there, you know, for Union County. Yep. And looking at Class 2A, Happy Valley home for the first round again. Once again, runner-up in Region 1, 2A. The Warriors looking for their first playoff win in seven years. Do they get it against Polk County? I think they got a very good shot at it. You know, we're talking about how well that defense is playing. Of course, Gabe McDougall should be back this week. Uh, Jamie Esterlin still playing, you know, very well for the Warriors. You know, so they've got some weapons offensively. I mean, it is a run-oriented offense. But also, as long as that defense, you know, keeps playing like it is, I think Happy Valley's got a very good shot against Polk County. Yep. And then speaking of Carter County teams, two of them on the road. Hampton on the road. They do get a shot at revenge on York Institute. Uh, The difference, of course, is this is in the first round, and it's in Jamestown. So a very tall task for uh, Dominic Burleson and the Bulldogs. Uh, Cloudland, for the first time in 12 years, Cloudland will play a playoff game away from Roan Mountain. And not since 2002 has Cloudland won a playoff game on the road. They get a chance to end that streak this week. They go to Oliver Springs, uh, an 8-2 and two football team. Um, and, Brian, it's not the playoffs yet in southwest Virginia, but 
it, it, it might as well be in Scott County. We got the Scott yeah. County Super Bowl. Uh, Twin Springs goes to Rye Cove. Obviously, the War Eagles are a favorite, yeah. but you can throw that out the window. Uh, Twin Springs has so many injuries. I, uh, like I said, wrote an article last week. They've got they used five quarterbacks, about three running backs. They lost three linemen. They even lost their uh, five, three and a half star kicker. So they they've had it up here. They're going to play hard. Brendan uh, Weddle, the terrific little athlete, he plays quarterback. Will probably start quarterback in this game. Rykovo is on a roll. This will be their first 10 0 regular season ever if they were able to pull it off. So I'm sure they're going to be motivated to do that with Lane and Lane and Will Rollins and all that Carter Roach and all the rest of them. Yeah. Uh, and of course, in Gate City, the Blue Devils trying to boost their playoff position even more. They're hosting Ridgeview, mm-hmm. a, team, a game that, de- that definitely will have playoff consequences, I'm sure. Yeah. This could possibly be the first of two uh, because right now Ridgeview is three, Gate City is six in the ratings. So, uh, uh, Gate City, you know, they just keep throwing the ball. Ridgeview's going to throw the ball with uh, O'Quinn's, at, Ryan O'Quinn's a terrific uh, quarterback. And he has some good receivers. So, Gate City will have to be on the alert in the secondary and try to get some pressure on him. Uh, Ridgeview against Gate City just slow down Hillman. The, the quarterback, uh, Zane Reed's played real well. So, he's got to watch out for him, too. And uh, people like Parker Jenkins stepping up and making plays. And Corey Bird, you know, get him the ball, he can move. So that should be, should be an interesting game. But like I said, next week we might be going to Ridgeview to play them again. <laughs> we'll see after this one's over. Yeah. So like you said, a precursor to the playoffs in the VHSL. Of course, the playoffs in the TSSAA get underway this week. Buckle up. It's going to be a fun ride. Enjoy every second of it. Thank you, all, thank you all as always for joining us. Jeff Birchfield, Andrew Smith, Brian Woodson, J.D. Vaughn. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, this has been the Six Rivers Media Sports Huddle, Episode 12. Thank you once again to Lazy J Farms as well. Lazy J Farms has been raising the finest cattle in all-natural port for three generations. Our blonde Aquitaine herd offers a leaner, healthier, and more tasteful beef that ships from our store directly to your freezer. This is the way your grandfather shot for meat, only now we wrap it, seal it, and send it right to your door. We have plenty of options to pick from, and they're all fresh and natural. Just visit our website at LazyJBeef.com and choose your package. We'll get it straight to you.